All right, so uh, we divided our job in CESA project in this way that uh, I'm about to tell you something general about the project, but I will, since we are limited in time to only 90 minutes, we decided to cover the language communities, the languages with so-called smaller activities within this introductory talk, while the three other uh, linguistic communities, which are larger by number of speakers and uh, with stronger activities, they will be covered by individual presentations. So uh, what I asked organizers several times to, to correct the title of this session, and the title should be Central and Southeast European. Uh, otherwise, our project would be called only SAR. So, <clears throat> so this is actually what uh, the acronym stands for. So the correct title of this session is Central and Southeast European uh, experience or whatever. Right. So uh, the, the overall outline of my talk will be, I'll say something about the uh, CESA project in general. I will give you then brief overview of situation in three countries and of course I will end up with some conclusions. Well, uh, if we start with uh, something what was named geolinguistic position, so if you look at uh, CESA and the acronym stands for that, CESA operates as a part of MetaNet Network of Excellence and it's one of the three supporting PSP projects which are defined by the geolinguistic spread. Uh, so we are covering Central and Southeast Europe. Actually, we are connecting three inner European seas. So you see there's a nice line following more or less uh, the Roman limes in a certain, to a certain extent. Some of the countries are on, on the other side, on one side and the others are on the other side, but we are following the Danube more or less. Okay? And the Caesar project covers these languages. So uh, in the first column after the language name you see the status of a language regarding the, the European Union, whether is it official or not. The, the first number is the number of inhabitants in these countries and the second number in Francis is, is the um, number which is supposed to be number of speakers of these languages. So this is an estimate, this is not uh, the exact number because the problem is how can you count the uh, emigrants and which generation of emigrants will you count into speakers second or third and so on and so on. But overall the number of inhabitants is 70 plus million, but if you count the estimates, it's more than 90 million. And all the languages in this project are Slavic languages apart Hungarian. And this is why I picked them up for uh, coordinators. Okay, so Caesar Consortium is built from these institutions, from these countries, and you see that uh, we are following the limitations of the call. So there's a uh, maximum of two partners in the per, per language. So some countries have two partners, some countries have only one partner. <clears throat> As you see, almost all partners are coming from academic institutions. There's only one uh, institute which is uh, not connected to academia or university. So the general aims of this project are that uh, <clears throat> knowing how the language resources and tools in the Caesar countries were developed. They were, of course, developed mostly in sporadic manner or according to only specific project needs. And, of course, in these cases, you, doesn't pay, you don't pay much attention to such issues as IPR or interoperability or long-term sustainability. And, uh, of course, and usability in different contexts later. So, the CESA project aims to address all those issues by standardizing, enhancing, and upgrading or cross-linking all those language resources and tools with a wide, wide variety of these resources and tools. And, of course, at the end, making them available through MetaShare platform, of, of which we have heard quite a lot so far. So, the general aims uh, is that what kind of resources we will include. So we will try to cover mono, multilingual speech databases, corpora, dictionaries and word nets, relevant uh, processing tools at this level of complexity, so tokenizers, lemmatizers, chunk chunkers and, and parsers. So at this moment we are not at, in these countries for these language communities, 
there are no advanced type of tools like um, frame semantics or, or um, dialogue systems or similar things. This, this level of, of um, tools and resources is yet to be reached. So our effort will be to make and ensure sustainability through mobilizing national LT communities. So this is something where our, one of our main work packages lies. And of course, we would like to raise awareness of the role in our respective communities, not just to policymakers, of, of which we expect uh, funding on a national level, but also to media and general public. And in this respect, I think having a, having a metaphorum in Budapest actually helps our project and our tasks and rises up the visibility of this project, as well as the whole Metanet uh, community. Okay, so these are the general aims of the project and I will now try to cover the situation, briefly situation in three countries. So the, the alphabetical order Croatia comes first. So I'll say something about research in language technologies. So the key player here is University of Zagreb Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. It has quite a long tradition in corpus linguistics and computational approaches to linguistic processing since 67. And uh, there, are, there were some older works done uh, from 70s and 80s, finished completed later. later. But today we are covering uh, this type of resources like national corpus, which is more than 100 million in size, and uh, parallel corpus where the English, of course, is uh, paired. Uh, Creation WordNet has been uh, started in 2007. There's a dependency tree bank which uh, is around 4,000 sentences, manually annotated at this moment. There is a, a huge morphological lexicon with more than 4 million word forms uh, available through at this web page. And uh, of course the hybrid uh, MSD tagger and lemmatizer named entity recognition system and the Mo creation model for Nuge. Well, about Nuge, I will say something at the end. Uh, the project in which this group is involved uh, are national projects, bilateral projects, and as well as European funded projects, which are listed here. Uh, about, uh, well, of course, that's just this group, just one player from the University of Zagreb, but of course, uh, <coughs> the Institute of Croatian Languages and Linguistics is another player. They are building a Croatian language repository and uh, they are very much involved in the building of terminological databases for different uh, domains and uh, they are producing digital dictionaries of Croatian dialects including geomapping uh, data that means that they are actually mapping uh, isoglossae to GIS systems. Uh, another faculty from the same university is Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing. They have been featuring uh, online spelling checkers since 94. And uh, there is a strong group on knowledge technologies in this faculty. They deal with information retrieval and extraction, visualization with knowledge technologies, and they have produced several tools which are quite useful in LT community as well. They have been involved in national projects and uh, bilateral in, in international projects, and they also are taking part in, uh, in some European projects like at LSMT. But uh, this doesn't cover all the, there is another university of Rijeka where the strong uh, speech processing unit is, is working, so they are building a creation spoken corpus. But uh, research, of course, uh, as you see here, is situated only in academic institutions. There's no research on L LT in industrial partners, in the industrial area. But um, another key player, I would say, is uh, the association. So the Creation Language Technology Society exists since 2004, and it plays, uh, I would say, integrating role for language technology in Croatia. So they are trying to coordinate the activities and actions. And also, um, this society is active in organizing conferences, international and national conferences. And there is also Portal Language Technologies for Croatian, which was trying to compete at certain time with uh, famous HLT Central, which uh, I cannot regret more to being, being shut down. And I, I really 
don't understand why AHLT Central was shut down. It, it is not so expensive to maintain such a type of, 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 work, of portal. Okay, uh, another very important point is curricula. So we have uh, at the level of MA studies, we have two uh, Department of Linguistics which feature uh, MA study of linguistics with a special track, special direction in computational linguistics. So we are, we are actually educating experts in computational and corpus linguistics. And this is what we understood. And that was the, the moment uh, when the Bologna process was, in, was introduced in Croatian universities. At this very moment we introduced this direction and now the first uh, experts have already graduated, got their MA last year. Okay, uh, about the industry partners. So the first spelling checker, industrial type of spelling checker was done in 97 and immediately it was bought by Microsoft and it's a part of MS Office today. There's a lexicographic publisher, private lexicographic publisher, who gave uh, their um, lexicographical database for free usage, for free access to everyone through web interface. There's a governmental agency who produced a morphologically and multilingually sensitive search engine for Croatian legislation. So the whole Croatian legislation is being indexed using Eurovoc, which was translated to Croatian back in 2000. So all these documents are retrievable using any language version of Eurovoc, and you will get the Croatian legislation text online freely. Or if you use Croatian, of course, you can then cover the morphological variants. The Croatian news agency, HINA, uh, is using uh, language technologies for tasks like automatic classification of news wires, automatic keyword and name entity extraction, and populating with this information a metadata for each news, uh, news item and then they use the lemmatization in their search engine. And uh, of course there's a number of translation and localization companies that are using machine-aided translation or machine translation th uh, tools like the, the three ones. So I would like to finish this presentation of creation LT situation with, um, with a reminder on, uh, I would say, historical meeting in Dubrovnik that happened in October 1989 with this title. And that was the first time, so I'm talking in, in a pan-European spirit at this moment, that was the first time that, the, that the experts in language technology from Central Eastern Europe met their Western colleagues. So if you, <coughs> if you remember that there were names like John Sinclair and Antonio Zampoli or Maurice Gross from the western side, or Peter Sgala, Eva Haichova, Ferenc Kiefer and Janusz Bien on the eastern side, or central eastern European, then this was really a historical moment. And this is uh, actually, this provided what we, what, we, sorry, what we have today, here, now. And I can see a few people from this conference in this room. Nicoletta was there, Eva Haichova, Gabor Prosov, and so some of us still are, are still are here working. Okay, so that's, that this covers more or less uh, uh, the the Croatian situation. So the situation in Serbia is, uh, if you look at uh, Serbian research institutions, uh, the University of Belgrade, with several of its faculties, are is is actually key player in Serbia. Uh, particularly the group at the Faculty of Mathematics, uh, and they have been working in this area since 70s, I would say. But also, Institute Mihailo Pupin is uh, notable for his software, his software tools, and this is exactly what we are using in CESAR project. They are really good programmers. At the University of Novi Sad, there's a Faculty of Philosophy uh, devoted very much to lexicography, but also there is a very strong group in speech processing at the Faculty of Technical Sciences. And of course you cannot uh, avoid Serbian Academy of Sciences and Arts, uh, which covers uh, lexicography and uh, multimedia content with two of, of its uh, um, member institutions. So about uh, Serbian resources and tools. If we look at the resources that do exist for Serbian, there's a corpus of contemporary Serbian. There, there's a number of aligned corpora, either Serbian English, Serbian French, or even 
multiple translations of of uh, same uh, novel, Verne's novel, in different Serbian uh, diachronically uh, uh, separated uh, translations. And of course, uh, there is a morphological dictionary, several of them, so of simple word forms and multi-word units, as well as proper names. Serbian WordNet uh, took part in uh, Balkan Net project, so the Serbian WordNet is one of the uh, nicely elaborated, I would say, in this area. And uh, there is a very large multilingual database of proper names. Uh, regarding tools, there is a Serbian module for Unitex and as well as Nuj. So, so these are very similar systems. But, uh, and uh, w of course we should say that for Serbian there is a Lemmatizer, MSD Tagger, and all of them are Multext East compliant. Uh, there is also a lexicographical workstation developed for different, uh, coping with different resources in the same time, as well as uh, a web version of similar, uh, similar um, workstation. And uh, Alphanum is actually a company, SME company, that is producing text-to-speech system and automatic speech recognition systems, and this is the offspring of the University of Novi Sad. So this is exactly what I was talking about. So this company is a really strong player in the speech in this area. And they are not only producing a speech um, tools for Serbian, but they are also covering other South Slavic languages like uh, Macedonian, like uh, Croatian, like Bosnian, and, and similar. So of course, there is a whole number of other, other uh, applications for small market and uh, different tools that have been uh, listed earlier and resources are here also uh, distributed to different tasks, as you see. And this more or less, I think, covers our Serbian presentation. Oh, no, uh, there's another nice case. So this is the GIS picture of a ret retrieval. So this is a map uh, with the textual description for for different type of OR. And if you use language resources that, uh, and language tools that enable you to search uh, morphologically uh, sensitive, to, to issue a morphologically sensitive query, that means that you are covering all the inflectional word forms, or you cover also with synonyms, so including WordNet, then the results is quite different. So this is search only by literal string. And this is the, the result of a search on GIS system that is textually supported by using language tools. So you see the difference in the, in the result. It, it's the same thing as you would fire the query in, in Google and you would get completely different numbers if you, if you take care about the morphology. Uh, the third country that I would like to uh, show at the end is uh, Slovakia. And in Slovakia, the key player is the Ludovic Tur Institute of Linguistics, which is a part of Slovak Academy of Sciences. And then the most notable project is Slovak National Corpus, as well as Slovak Spoken Corpus, and there's a number of parallel corpora. And of course, uh, this level of morphology, and uh, so tagging and lemmatizing is covered, as well as Slovak Tree Bank and Slovak WordNet. So as you see, if we look at the block table, we have more or less similar, similar cells covered in all those languages. But projects in which uh, this uh, institution took part are on the national level or European level. But of course, there's an institute of informatics as well. And they produced the ONTEA tool for information extraction and domain-dependent metadata generation. So, they are extracting information from the flow, flow, freely flowing text. And this is also one tool that, that covers the Slovak as a Slavic language and, of course, as morphologically rich one. And uh, there's a whole list of different institutions that are covering speech analysis and speech synthesis or speech processing for Slovak and not just uh, as a part of Academy of Sciences, but also different universities. 
and uh, technical universities that do produce, uh, they did produce um, different packages, different software uh, libraries that help, work, help us work with, uh, with uh, sound. And let me just quickly list a few companies in Slovak, uh, Slovakia that are using different uh, language resources and language, language tools. And I will now conclude with the last slide. I'd like to say something about Nuj. The Nuj is actually a very nice development environment, which is freely downloadable at this address. And uh, we think that the Nuj will play a significant role in rising the popularity of language technology. Why? Because it's based on widened concepts of local grammars, so it, it's a direct tradition from Maurice Gross and his former assistant, Max Silberstein, who produced the whole system. And it's extremely easy to implement and use. Students adore it. It's the development environment in which you draw formal grammars. You draw them. You have a graphical interface. You draw grammars. And then the system generates the finite state transducer out of these grammars, immediately apply them to a corpus, and you see the results. And this is what young people want to see right now. I want to see how my system works. And then you, when you see that uh, the strings that are covered by a formal grammar are not the ones that you expected, then you go back, redraw the grammar, rerun it again, and it's lightning fast. So the whole thing, what we are trying to do in, within the Caesar project, we already have uh, all the resources for Nuj for five Caesar languages done in a rudimentary way. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to enhance them. But we also selected Caesar as a showcase in which we would like to ex expose how the multilingual and multilevel processing tools can be developed and applied to our languages. And Nuj is uh, language independent. There's a huge Arabic community working with Nuj. Um, ten days ago, we had a Nuj conference, which runs every year in Dubrovnik, in, in, in Croatia. And we had invited speaker uh, Shuli Winter from Israel. And he wants to apply Nuj to Hebrew as well. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, what Caesar w tries to do, Caesar is trying to make Nuj an open source software available for all types of platforms. And this is what is clearly stated in our description of work. OK, so these are the aims that Caesar is trying to do. And uh, I've been warned that I have to stop now. Thank you very much for your attention.